My name's Amy Marson, and I'm here today to talk to you about CNT's three color resources. I'm the publisher at CNT Publishing, and when I first started working at CNT Publishing, I didn't have any color confidence. And after working with the uh, Ultimate Three in One Color Tool over the years, I've gained a lot of color confidence, and I want to talk to you about that today. So I'm going to start off by introducing you to the three tools that we have, and then I will show you some color plans and and then I will talk to you about tints, tones, and shades. And I'll show you the best kept secret about the color tool, the value finders. So let's get started. So the first product I want to show you is the ultimate three-in-one color tool. And the reason that it's called the three-in-one color tool is that it has the 24 uh, pure colors of the Ives color wheel as well as the two value finders. And that's what makes it the three-in-one color tool. And the next one is the Studio Color Wheel. So the Studio Color Wheel is a poster, and what's really great about it is it comes, it's two-sided, so on one side you can see the color plans, and then on the other side, it's just a beautiful decorative poster with the 24 petals of the Ives Color Wheel done in different textures. And the next one is the Essential Color Wheel Companion. This is the third one in the line, and it really is a great addition to the line, and I'll show you why. I'll give you a hint, it has something to do with these little petals on the end. First thing I want to show you about the color resources that we have is each one of them comes with a comprehensive set of instructions. So you get to learn the color theory of the Ives Color Wheel firsthand by reading the instructions. Each one also gives you the color plans so that you can have pleasing color every time. So these are the directions with the essential color wheel and they come in the header card. On the studio color wheel it's in the poster wrap and in the ultimate color tool it's the first few cards in the package. Here's the color wheel and you can see as you move it you can see I've got my yellow, I've got my chartreuse, I've got my yellow green, and I've got my red violet. So let me show you a couple different examples of from fabric, from wool, from um, embroidery, uh, pearl cotton. I'm going to show you different ways that you can put colors together to get pleasing color every time. So when you look at the color tool this is the first one that I'm using, and I'm looking for analogous colors for, for yellow-green, which is number three. So what I can do is I can look at the other colors in the color plan right here, or because I have the bigger version, the Essential Color Wheel Companion, I'm going to use this for right now. And what I want to show you is yellow green is right here, number three. So I can use the colors on either side out basically two colors per. So I have a choice of five colors I can use. So looking at those five colors, this is where you see the magic of the Essential Color Wheel Companion because you can slide things right underneath. So you can set your fabric down and then you can slide it like that to get a sense of how well it's going to match. And remember, I'm not looking to match these colors exactly. I'm looking for pleasing color. So this would be another example using this variegated floss that's analogous. This would be at the far end of that example. And this would be at the other far end of that example. So you can see these are all analogous colors. Just to get a sense of all the different ways that color shows up in different textures. So I've shown you wool felt. I've shown you embroidery floss. And I've got a bunch more in there, apparently. Um, but also craft text. So you can see that craft text you can see the aqua green and the yellow green here. So what's really great about this is it works with all different kinds of fibers, fabrics, and textures, and paper too. So that's analogous color. So the next color family I want to show you is monochromatic, and that's using all the same color but in different tints, tones, and shades. So 
To refresh everyone's memory, a tint is the pure color with white added. The tone is the pure color with gray added, and the shade is the pure color with black added. So tints have white added, tones have gray added, and shades have black added. So on the one side of the card, you get a few samples of the different options. When you flip the card over, you see a larger variety of options and they're clearly labeled which ones are tints, which ones are tones, which ones are shades, and then it always tells you where the pure color is. Now this tool can be used for a lot of things other than fabric. Uh, you can use the CMYK, CMYK colors if you're trying to do something um, to print out or have on a screen. Um, it's what printers use when they're uh, picking colors. They use CMYK which is cyan, yellow, and magenta with black added. It also includes hex colors um, so that you can use it on your screen or for websites. The thing to remember about the three-in-one color tool and all of the color products that we sell is that these are to help you use the colors within the color tool to create and have pleasing color every time you work on a product or a project. Um, they're not to help you precisely match a color that someone has specified and then you go here to find it because that's what, not what this tool is for. So going back to, we're looking for tones. So here is a piece of craft hex. This is our Marsala craft hex. It's a really beautiful color. So I might call this brick red. Um, different people call colors different names. So here, this is a tone. It has gray added. So it's the pure color red with gray added. Another example of that is this one. So this is the color red and it's had a little bit of gray added as well. So it's not quite the pure color, but it's close. Here's another example, this beautiful Andover wool that just recently came out uh, that I've been playing with, Kim Schaefer's design. This has the same shade. So you can see it's quite a bit darker and it's got some black added to it. So you can see how it works with all these different things. And the interesting thing about color is some things reflect light and some things absorb light. And that happening changes your perception of color. So you might look at this and this is really reflective. It's on a white background, it's a little bit shiny. So things will look brighter to you here. This absorbs light. It's got a sort of a matte texture. This has a little bit shinier of a texture. This is gonna absorb more light. And so it looks much brighter. This does the opposite. Uh, it's got a woven texture, there's depth to it, so this is going to look different. So all these are from the same color card family, but they all look different. The next color in the color family we're going to talk about is complementary color. So complementary color is that thing you find in nature where you find a beautiful flower that has uh, blue-violet petals and a lovely golden yellow center. So I've got some examples here to show you of the two colors. And there's your golden yellow. So we've got that in fabric. We've got our blue-violet with craft text. You can see down here, it's very close. And like I said, the colors aren't always gonna match perfectly. That's not the goal. We're looking for pleasing color every time. So then we've got some yellow thread here. And what's nice about the complementary colors is that they pop. So when you take some yellow thread and you put it on that blue violet, you just see how much it just pops right off. And the same is true when you've got your blue thread on your yellow fabric. And one of the reasons that I show you this is one of the great things about sewing on craft text is the fabric really pops and stands out because you're usually doing top stitching because with craft text you don't fold under the edges. So, okay, the next one we're going to talk about is the triadic color plan. And as I mentioned earlier, these color plans are based on the five most beautiful color plans based on nature. So this one we're doing is triadic. So here is our essential color wheel companion. And you can see, I can use this petal here and I can put my fabric underneath and I can see that that color and that color are close enough. So that's really gonna work out well. Then I've got my red violet 
and I can put that underneath and see that that works. And I could say, mm, maybe I don't want to use fabric for my red violet. Maybe I want to use this beautiful wool. So I'm going to use this for the red violet. And then the other thing you could, just to remind you how different the colors are based on what kind of a texture you're using, you can see that this is also part of the yellow-orange color family, or we call it tangerine. So that's another example. So then my next in the triadic color family is blue-green. And I'm using this one, and this is the blue-green that I'm picking up. It's a really light tint of blue-green, but that's what I want. I want it to pop. So once again, what's a tint? It's color with white added. What's a tone? Color with gray. What's a shade? Color with black. So here we have our triadic color plan. And then I just want to show you I've tangled it up now, I've trapped my little tag. So here's another example of red violet, and I've got the orange thread around it, and you can see how nicely that pops on the craft text. And as I mentioned before, you're usually top stitching with craft text, which is why it's so nice to use either a complementary color or a triadic color. So this is the triadic color family. Um, this gives you a really good example of how to use this tool where you can just put fabric underneath it like that or craft text, and it's really easy to see how it all works. So the next thing I want to show you are the value finders. And I think I said at the beginning of the video that these are the most, uh, they're like the big surprise in the package, which is what makes it the three-in-one color tool. So a value finder is something you use to subtract the color out of your fabric or your paper, whatever you're working with, to see what the value is. And as a friend of mine, Alex Anderson, always says, color gets the credit and value does the work. So let's get started. So here, I and I'm using two different colorways to show you value because there's two different value finders in here. There's a red value finder and a green value finder. If you put the red value finder over reddish fabrics, you don't get a true reading. That's when you use the green value finder. So you use the green value finder, and what you see is right here, I've got a light value, I've got a medium value, and I've got a dark value, so it takes the color out. And a little tip for those of you who use a design board, um, if you're ever not sure when you're putting your fabrics up on the board, if you've got good value, take a photograph with your cell phone and then turn it into a black and white photo. And right away, bang, you're gonna know if you have good value. The other value finder, which works with everything but red, so you only need the green for the red tones, reds and oranges. This will show you lights, mediums, and darks again. So here you've got your light fabric, here you have your medium fabric, and here you have your dark fabric. And that lets you know if your values are going to be balanced in your quilts or in your projects, and then you'll have pleasing color, and it'll be a nice balance. Because if, you have, if everything's dark, things can feel heavy and there's no movement in the quilts. It's the same if you have it light or medium, but if you have a blend, then you have pleasing color and you have movement in your quilts. So that's why value is so important and it doesn't get any credit, only color does. So that's what the value finders are for. So keep this next to your design wall, keep this one in your purse, and keep this one at your fabric table, and you will have perfect pleasing color every time.